bad, you can take a utility knife, okay? Now watch this, you guys, because what I see a lot of people do in my classes, I've seen students do this, where they just do that. And it's a little bit dangerous looking. And my issue with this is you don't get a lot of control. And so the likeliness that you're gonna snap off that tip is really, really high. So instead, the, the real key here, you guys, is you take your thumb and you put your thumb behind the knife and the thumb gives you a lot of control. So when you go up here and you guys start to sharpen some of the pencil, your thumb really guides the knife going upwards and then you can be a lot more gentle because a lot of these pencils, they break really, really easily. And so when you guys reinforce the utility knife with the back of your hand, it's much, much easier, okay? And so what I usually do is I want it to be pretty long because if it's not long enough, you guys aren't gonna be able to make your nice rugs of tone, okay? So I'm not quite done yet, okay? And you can keep going. I mean, I know people who make it like really long. It's up to you guys, however you wanna do it. But then what I do, I'll try to show you guys over here. You have to do it on the edge of something for it to work. You can't just do it flat on the paper. So this is like a sheet of really fine grit sandpaper. You don't want anything that's too coarse. And what you do, I know this is a little hard for you guys to see, is you just take your colored pencil like this, and you're trying to make the edge of the colored pencil like really nice and round, because if that edge isn't round, you're not gonna get very good fine areas of tone, okay? So just take a minute and do that. And then what you end up with is all these nice weapons. <laughs> these, these look like they'd be really good if you were in a medieval war or something. It seems like you could do really bad damage with some of these pencils. So anyway, I hope you guys are all sharpened up and ready to go. Okay. So I happen to really like using earth tones because I don't know, maybe I'm trying to like channel Michelangelo because he used all those like really nice like red tones. So I happen to like the ones that are a little bit more like burnt sienna, but I mean, these other ones that are sort of like burnt umber, those are fine too. And honestly, it doesn't matter what color you guys use. It's like, whatever you wanna use is totally fine. Okay, so let's put this aside. And we're gonna start out with a five minute warm up, because as much as I want to do a longer drawing today, I just know that I'm not going to do anything remotely productive unless I have a good warm up. Okay, so this is the first image we're going to do. And the way I'm going to plan this out is I'm going to put one hand up here, I'll put another hand here, and then we'll do a third drawing that I'm like really going to finish today because I know people have been asking me for that. And so I think if we do fewer poses, I'll actually be able to do that. Okay, and if you have not been here before, typically what I do is I will draw for like five or 10 minutes or so, and then I'll take a break and I'll look at the chat and I'll answer questions and look at comments then. So I will not look at the chat when I'm drawing because it's too confusing, but I will definitely get to the chat. So if you guys have questions while I'm drawing, just type it in and I'll get to it later. Okay, so let's get started. Um, let's see. Okay. Oh, wait, is it not working? It's starting. Okay, well, Neil says it's working. Can you guys tell me in the chat? Because somebody said it's not starting, but I think it's starting. Okay, let's see. Let's just make sure. Okay, if, if can somebody tell me in the live chat if we are doing okay? Because I think we are. <laughs> Right. All right. Yeah. Okay. Good. Wait a second. Rhiannon says it's working for me. Out of girl says no. Blue Wolf Spirit says it's working. Not working for me. It is working. Okay. All right. Good. I, I just get worried when I look at the stream whether things are actually working or not. Okay. Okay. So let's get started with the timer. Okay. Here we go. Okay. So, oh, geez. I was drawing yesterday, but I was drawing with a razor blade. <laughs> and so this is not 
quite the same thing as I was doing yesterday, but that's okay. That's fine. I'm not, oh dear, even remotely warm. Look, look at me. I just started with the fingers. That was really stupid. Okay, let's move the drawing over a little bit because I want the placement to be a little bit better. So let's get, oh dear, looks like a rat's nest already. Whatever. Th this is warm up time, you guys. This is time to just play. Okay, so I, I don't even know that I'm drawing anything right now. <laughs> like, okay, well, there's an arm. <laughs> That's a little bit of an improvement. Okay, let's get in like the angle, this larger finger here. This one goes all the way to the top, so I'm actually going to move my paper down. Okay, so if that's the height of that finger, though, that means that this finger is all the way down here, which then moves the, oh, geez. Okay, the palm's like all the way down here. Okay, because guys, in the beginning of the drawing, you're just feeling it out, okay? Don't, don't try to nail it. You're not going to do that. You just want to get some strokes down because honestly, and you guys can tell me if you agree with this, I think it's easier to put down something that is like bad and flawed and then to fix it than to try to get it really good the first time through. I think it's much easier to do it that way. Okay, so let's get in some, ooh, there's a nice metacarpal coming down the middle. There's another one here, which is very pronounced. I'm gonna start to get in some of the joints. Joints are so critical. I mean, if there's anything you guys really, really need to look at in a drawing of a hand, it's definitely joints, okay? Like here, with the thumb, we have a joint coming down that way. And then this, this finger is like weird. It, it's like all strange and mushy looking, okay? And then some of these wrinkles down here that come down in the hand. Okay, and th this finger is very prominent. So I'm gonna really show, there's quite a bit of foreshortening and we will talk about later on when we're starting to do the longer poses, all the stuff about those overlaps that I was talking to you guys about in that lecture, which if you have not watched it, I wanna take a look because I had a lot of fun <laughs> finding all those movie pictures. Like it's the one time that I'm looking for a slime injury that I like don't mind when it takes forever. I'm like, oh, that's all right. I think I better head over to this Instagram again and try to find the, just the right screen cap, you know? <laughs> Guys, I want to confess something. <laughs> my husband was away for a few days with my kids because they were off doing stuff in Salt Lake City. So I had like my own little artist residency. <laughs> it was really cool. I didn't have to apply for it and it didn't cost me anything. I didn't have to go anywhere. It was great. So I had my own little artist residency. And you know what I did? I just like sat in the living room. I had the TV on and I was working on those razor blade drawings. Maybe some of you guys saw them, they were on my Instagram. And I just watched X-Men movies all weekend. <laughs> it was awesome. I was like, no one's gonna bother me. I can play the movie as long as I want and no one's gonna tell me to make them lunch in the middle of the day. It was like, oh my God, it was fabulous. It's like, wow, this is my idea of a great weekend. <laughs> you guys should try it sometime. It's like your own little personal artist residency. It's so helpful. Like, you know, regular artist residency, you gotta apply, you gotta write a statement, you got to figure out the expenses and then you gotta travel and this was awesome. So I recommend your own little personal artist residency. It's way better than the other ones that you actually have to like get into. So <laughs> let's see. All right. All right, 30 seconds. Remember, this is a warm up, and I'm not even gonna try with tone right now. It's like not enough time. I'm just trying to get a handle on the joints. And I sort of lost this finger. So let me try to put it back. I mean, whatever. It's fine. Okay, this felt, you know, I feel like I want to do like eight more warm ups, but you know, I might do that. I might do another warm up of the next pose and then draw it again as a 10 minute pose. Okay, let's do another one because I'm so not warmed up right now and I really need to just get moving. Okay, so we're going to go to the next pose. And for this pose, what we're going to do instead we're gonna draw it once as a five minute pose just to continue the warming up. 
but then I'm going to draw it again as like a 15 minute pose. Okay. Because I think I, I just need to move right now. So, okay. And then after this pose, I'll take a break and see what you guys are saying in the chat. Okay, cool. All right. So let me just move my paper up a little bit more so you guys can see that better. Okay. So let's do another five minute pose to get warmed up. Okay. This time, Gonna remember, start with the palm because, oh man, isn't it funny? It's like, it's so easy to give people advice, but then to like take your own advice is like really hard. And sometimes when I'm drawing and I catch myself doing things that I always bother students about doing, I'm like, you're such a hypocrite. Oh my God. Like you totally know what you should be doing. And yet you guys, I fall into the exact same traps with drawing that I think are very typical. So it's like even somebody who has experience and totally knows better, it's still hard. And so what I'm trying to say is a lot of the things that I teach you guys about, it's not always easy to implement, even for me. And it's like, yeah, I just feel like an idiot when I can't do it, but whatever. Tell me you guys in the chat, if you are using colored pencil, what type of colored pencil you're using and maybe what brand and whether you like it. Because actually the colored pencils that I really like, I don't have because they're in storage. And so I'm using these Prismacolor ones, which I don't, I mean, they're fine. I just don't like them that much because they're a little bit crumbly. So for me, because I'm sort of an aggressive artist, they can be problematic because sometimes they crumble too much and then I really have trouble with it. So typically the ones that I like to use, Faber-Castell makes this particular one, they're called Dura Madness, and they're like extra wide colored pencils. And they're, they're really nice because they're, they're a little bit chunky. So what I usually use, I'll use those in conjunction with the really sharp small ones, like the ones I'm using now. And I like those a lot. And I discovered those because Faber-Castell gave us supplies for a tutorial. And so that was kind of a nice little accident. Because you know something? I'm normally not really a fan of colored pencils. You, usually they're not really my first thing. Like most of the time I'd much rather draw with like a contour crayon or something like that. But you know what? Husband delivery service did not go to the art store yesterday. <laughs> so I did not have the opportunity to do that. Okay, let's, let's figure out this mess of fingers up here. And in this drawing, even though this is a pretty short drawing, I'm gonna put in the fingernails because the fingernails do, I think, help a lot in terms of really seeing the angle of the fingers because the fingers, they're, they're sort of like leaping out at you, okay? So the, the fingernails in this case, they're really handy because you really can understand where things are. Okay, so let's get in some of these creases. And then there's a lot of overlaps in here, like all these little chunks of the, the different sections of the fingers definitely have that. Um, and then it's got nice lighting. Hey, I did a pretty good job on this reference photo. Okay. Um, all right, let, let's start to subdivide what's happening in here. I'm going to slow down so I can see a little bit more carefully because there's still a lot to follow here. Jeez. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. I'm getting a little bit confused because there's so much in here, but I think I'm starting to figure it out. You'll see that your pace of your drawing is going to change and it's fine. Like sometimes it's really fast for a little bit. Other times it's a little bit slower because you're trying to look a little bit more carefully and, and that's fine. I mean, I have this like weird guilt thing where if I'm not drawing fast and rigorous, I feel like I'm getting really lazy, but I don't know. It's kind of a dumb hang up that I have. I don't know where it came from. I don't know. I guess because I always want my drawings to have energy and I feel like if they don't, it's my fault and you know, all that deep stuff. <laughs> Tell me what deep thoughts are in your head right now. <laughs> like, I don't do small talk. I don't know if you guys know about that. Like, I'm always like talking about death at breakfast. <laughs> it's like, I can't talk about the weather. It's just like, nah, it doesn't satisfy me at all. 
we have to have like existential conversations at breakfast. Okay, I feel more warmed up, so I'm glad that I did this extra five minute pose because although it's kind of a disaster, who really cares? Because it did, it, it served its purpose. It did what I needed it to do. And that's sometimes you need drawings that do that. Okay, all right, so that's it for our warm ups. Cool. Okay, so now I'm gonna go and take a look at the chat. So let me just put my slides aside and we'll see what you guys are talking about. Let me just move my mic so you guys can actually hear me. Okay, let's see what you guys are saying in the chat. Thank you so much for the super chat, Nikki A. We really appreciate it. As you guys know, all of our content is 100% free and Art Prof relies entirely on donations to stay up and running. So we always appreciate your support. Okay, so I'm gonna scroll back up and see what people are talking about. George says, I agree about putting something bad and down first rather than something perfect. I feel like building on top of a mess makes the drawing have more life. I'm so glad you said that, George, because one thing that I really like about drawing that does not happen in painting is that drawing really shows traces of your process. Because if you think about a painting, if you don't like something, you paint over it and then it's gone. You don't see it anymore. And so what I like about drawings is seeing that path of the drawing, seeing how that drawing really starts to develop. You really can see that in a drawing, which is really, really cool. Okay, what else are people saying? Uh, let's see, we got a deep thought, <laughs> Victor says. My deepest thought usually is how far should I push this artwork? Okay, that's a lot less depressing than my breakfast conversations. <laughs> uh, let's see. Ra Nook says, is it me or are you a bit slower today? Or is this pencil effect? You know something? I really think it's the pencil thing because I think, for lack of a better word, I feel like a Neanderthal when I draw with charcoal. Like it just feels very primitive. And so I think it gets me to be a little bit more aggressive. I think with the pencil, it's just a much more refined, elegant, sharp tool. And so I don't feel like I can like, uh, like stab, well, I guess I could if I wanted to, stab the uh, drawing board the way that I might do with something else, but that's fine. I mean, I think that there's no correct pace to draw. I just think that you have to be able to draw at different paces. Like I think if you're always drawing hyper slow, or you're always drawing super fast, that's probably not a good thing. You probably want to vary it up a little bit more. Jojo says, something I struggle with when I'm having fun with a sketch or bad doodle, I feel like it shouldn't be in a portfolio, even though I had fun with it. That's okay, Jojo. I mean, I think every drawing and sketch you guys do has its place in your development. Like those two drawings I just did, who cares? <laughs> like they're probably gonna go in a portfolio never to be seen again. They serve their purpose, which was warming me up, getting me ready to draw. And that's the most important thing. So you don't always have to tell yourself that drawings have to do a certain thing. They have to, you can't have that expectation because you're gonna be really frustrated. Neil is asking, what's an artist residency and how do you draw with a razor? Well, if you guys look in my Instagram, I did have a video in my post, not from yesterday, from the day before, where I have a, a little clip of me drawing with a razor, so you can do that. An artist residency is basically an opportunity to go somewhere and have a studio space and just work on your stuff for a period of time. There's a lot of different residencies. I mean, some of them are a week, some of them are three months, some of them are a whole year. It really depends. And there's a broad range of types. There's some residencies where honestly, you're like almost paying for everything, which is kind of ridiculous. And there's some where they give you studio and that's it. You got to pay for your travel. And there's other ones like ugh, the Rome prize, which is sweet, where they're basically like, here's the studio in Rome and here's all this money, go make some stuff. But of course those are extremely competitive. But yeah, I mean, there's a lot of different residencies. People use it because it's a way to get away. And some of the residencies actually have people who are not visual artists as well. So it's almost like a little artist colony where you're at for a little period of time, which is really, really cool. Okay. So let's see what else people are saying. 
All right. Wow, you guys have a lot. Okay, I'm trying hard to go through all these comments. Uh, let's see. Xavia Ivana says, my hands have been so much better since your last video. The tip about contextualizing the hand and starting from the wrist has been game changing. Yeah, it's like so many people, it's all about the fingers when it comes to the hand. And I get it. I mean, that's the first thing that you really take a look at. And it's sort of weird that people are just so into the hands to the point that they really, I think, have difficulty focusing on the structural stuff, which is really, really tough. Okay. Comcuke says, I've seen people do amazing work with Crayola colored pencils, but God, I hate them. I didn't want to get my Prismacolors out. And W315 says, Prismacolors are impossible to sharpen. Quality was much better in the past. And Girl says, I love starting, but I feel lost in the middle. I love seeing how you work through the mid part, the meat part. Bones and skin are easier for the moment. Yeah, you know what, out of girl, I really call that the plateau. I think that that is very common. I think in the beginning, it's like, oh, it's so obvious what you need to do. Obviously, there's nothing going on. And then when you're finishing, I think you can really say, oh, okay, now I can do the details. I can slow down. But in the middle, it's a little weird because you guys tell me in the chat, do you ever get to this point where you're working on a drawing and you're like, it's definitely not done. Like you're so sure it's not resolved, but then you're like, I don't know what to do. And so it's this strange plateau where you know you have to do more, but you're not really sure what it is that you're supposed to be doing. So tell me in the chat, if you've ever hit quote the plateau that I'm talking about, because I think that's very common for a lot of people. It's like, how do you get that transition to actually really creating something that's more finished? Okay, what else are people saying? Let's see, Akan Kyasha, I'm sorry for mispronouncing your name. Thank you so much for giving such constructive feedback. It really helps for a person like me who's doing engineering, but wanted to go to an actual art school. Well, I'm really glad to hear that because you know what? Art school is just not an option for most people. It's too expensive. It's such a big time commitment. And for a lot of people, it's like the point that you're at in your life, it just doesn't make sense. And honestly, for the longest time, I was such a like art school <laughs> person. I mean, for obvious reasons, I taught at RISD for many, many years, but you know something now with remote learning going on because of the pandemic and a lot of the research that I've been doing about how to teach online, I don't know, I'm, I'm changing my mind a little bit about art school, which is kind of a big deal for somebody like me. I mean, this is a conversation for later, but it's interesting, I think. At a girl says, how do you protect those long tips of the pencils? Some of it's pressure. You have to make sure that you're not being too aggressive. I mean, that's sort of what somebody mentioned earlier that I was drawing a little slower. And I think that's probably it is part of me knows if I'm too aggressive with the color of pencil, I'm, it's gonna snap and then I can't do that. Whereas if I have a hunk of charcoal, it's like, it doesn't matter how hard I push. So it is interesting that I think, depending on the material that you're drawing with, it really does affect your drawing approach. And that's why I always tell people, I'm like, listen, don't just draw with pencil your whole life. Like try the other stuff. Even if charcoal is not your favorite thing to draw with, just do it anyway. And so you have that experience, you have that vocabulary under your belt is really, really helpful. Taylor Vu says, when that happens, the plateau, I have to leave the room since my instincts are never to leave well enough alone. I can't trust myself with this stuff. That's everybody. <laughs> I mean, that's just the way it is. And you have to just roll with the punches. Okay, guys, let's do that same pose again. But now I'm going to do 15 minutes because I really want to make sure I have enough time to do that. And I bet you anything, I am going to hit that plateau at some point. So we will definitely talk about that. Okay. So I'm actually going to do 16 minutes because it takes me, no, not 15 hours. Definitely not. Okay. 16 minutes. Um, okay. So let's get that started. All right. Hang on a second. I got to shift back to my drawing position. I'm going to get a new sheet of paper and we'll get up and running. All right switch. 
my scene to drawing. Okay, so here's the same pose. And again, we're gonna do 15 minutes, okay? We'll get further along and maybe we'll figure out what exactly is going on with that plateau, okay? All right, I'm gonna draw bigger because at least for me, what happened to that other sheet of paper? Is this the one with, oh, okay, sorry. Guys, I have like no paper left because everything's in storage. I think I'm gonna have to like call up some manufacturers and be like, please ship me some paper. I'm dying, I'm on this like desert island. <laughs> There's like nothing out here. You know what I'm gonna do right now? This is what I'm thinking. You guys ever like nitpick the last drawing? This is what I do. So one thing that I didn't like about the approach I took with the last few drawings is I didn't exaggerate enough. I think I was trying too hard to get it accurate and that's not a good place for me, at least. I, I like to really exaggerate a lot more. So I'm gonna try to do that. I'm gonna try to be a little bit pushier about my lines and make them bulgier and more dramatic than they actually are. Because you know something, I don't know what it is, but when people try to get accuracy, oftentimes what they get is like a really stiff, watered down version of what the drawing really is. And what's interesting is I know a lot of people say to me a lot of the times, well, I wanna learn how to draw realistically, okay? I mean, in the annoying academic art world, they call it representational because nobody wants to use the word realism. It's really ridiculous, actually kind of stupid. But anyway, people say to me, I want to learn how to draw realistically. And I say, okay, well, um, let's really think about what that means because for me, this is my opinion, okay? And you guys do not have to believe this with me, but when I draw, I do like a certain amount of realism. Like I'm not an abstract artist by any means. Like I'm not, you know, Jackson Pollock or anything. Like I really want to make something that looks like a hand. But the thing is, I'm not really after accuracy. So you have to say to yourself, okay, well, what are you after? And I think the, the words that I use is I want to create a heightened reality. So something that feels real, but it feels bigger than life, if that makes any sense. It's sort of like, you guys ever watch a movie that really is like realistic and believable? Like it takes place in real time and there's nothing fantastical about stuff like that. And so it's a real movie in that sense. But then it's like the way that the movie is conveyed, it, it feels more exaggerated than real life. Like, like, you know that real life is not quite like that, even though it's a believable situation. So that that's kind of what I think about when I think about realism in art, I don't think about realistic. I think about heightened reality, okay? All right, now, wow, those fingers are smushed. Okay, that's really bad, guys. All right, <laughs> let's do this again. They look like hot dogs, I think. They're way too small or, oh, you know what? It's my palm, my palm is too big. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna make the palm smaller I'm such an idiot. Why did I not put the thumb in there? Okay, that's really stupid. Guys, don't leave out parts, okay? Like if you're really, like I was already putting in fingernails and I didn't have a thumb. That's bad, okay? I don't recommend that. So let, let's actually, let's move around more and let's try to get the scale a little bit better because I totally messed that up. I mean, I do sort of think I did make the fingers a little bit too flat, but yeah, I gotta, this is complicated. <laughs> it's, it's the foreshortening. Let's blame it on the foreshortening. It's the foreshortening's fault. So that's why I can't focus. <laughs> okay, let's do really do the overlap. Okay, so I'm gonna focus on this finger here because this is really the one that juts out. And there, there is this overlap here because there's this joint behind it. And then this overlaps here and this overlaps underneath. And I suppose I should draw the ring because it's a little bit confusing if I don't and then there's some there's like a crease down here okay so does everybody see i'm using the finger here it's almost like it's an anchor for me because what i can do is build the other fingers from that finger you, you just decide it's the anchor i can always go back and fix it but for now i'm going to use it as a reference because now i can say okay well this finger comes out here this fingertip comes behind 
This, does everybody see this? So this finger is in front of this one. And then let's get in this fingernail like that. And then here's an overlap. Okay, this overlap comes up here and this overlaps behind. Yeah, the other reason I think I'm probably drawing uh, slower today is that the foreshortening is hard. It, it's really not easy to do. Okay, and this one, the fingernail is like hiding and then the tip is like behind that one. So it, remember, it's like layers. It's like what's in front, what's behind. That's super, super important. And then this one, there's another overlap and here's another overlap like that. Okay, and now let, let's move around because I'm staying there for too long. Gotta keep going. Okay, I'm gonna try to make this again more bulbous than before. And th this is a pretty big stroke here. So I want to make that more dramatic. And this one's like really dark. I'm not going to do it now, but eventually what I'll do is I'll get in there and I'll try to make some of the strokes more dramatic. Okay. So does everybody notice what I'm doing here? I'm not tracing the hand. That's what a lot of people do is they'll say, oh, if I want to draw the hand, I have to draw the outside contour. But what I find is easier is drawing from the inside and then pushing myself out rather than starting with the contour and going in. I think when you start with the contour, sometimes it's like things don't line up. So if I start in the middle and I push outwards, there's more flexibility. So I think that's a lot harder. Okay, um, let's see. So let's bring this back in here. Like the, these folds in the palms are so important. So, oh shoot, I'm getting off track then. Okay, hang on. I think I need, shoot, crap. Uh, no, 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 no. I, I'm worried I'm like running out of space or like, see, this is the problem. When you draw slower, it's easier to lose track of the proportions. And I'm sort of starting to do that right now, which is not good. So I think what I need to do is back up and start Actually, what I'm going to do now, you guys should do this. You should just like get some distance and just squint because this is definitely, the, the wrist is too low. I'm going to move it up because you won't see stuff up close. That's the issue, okay? So if I do that and that pushes, see, I'm ignoring the thumb again. This is really stupid. Don't do that. Okay. Because the thumb is foreshortened, okay? Because the the tip of the thumb, which is here, really just, okay, there's an overlap here and this overlap in the thumb, it's really subtle, okay? There's an overlap that goes behind there. There's an overlap here. And then this crease is pretty dramatic. So I'm gonna make that one pretty dark. Okay, let's do some more squinting. Get back, get some distance. Uh, I don't know, it, it looks like, it looks like bread. <laughs> it looks like a baguette. I don't know. It looks all like, I don't know. I, I just, I'm looking at my hat. I'm like, it looks like Jabba the Hutt. Like it, it does not look good. Okay. <laughs> it's fine, Clara. It's fine. You guys ever talk to yourselves when you draw? I do all the time. Okay. See, I'm still working out. All right. <sighs> Shoot. All right. Let, let's really emphasize the knuckles. I really need to do a better job with that, okay? So I think I, I gotta take some time and like really solidify the fingers because like this fingernail is all the way over here, which is like really messed up looking. So if I move this fingernail more over here, like usually fingernails are not that helpful. Like sometimes they're really distracting, but in this case, I can't not do them because it's gonna mess up the way the hand looks. And the fingernails really say something about the point of view in a way that some of the other sections do not. Sheesh, I'm like really liney today. Ugh. I really should put in my, my rugged tone, but I'm not feeling that stable right now about where the drawing is. It could just be freaking foreshortening. It's messing me up. All right, I, I should not pick anymore. Let's just do a couple more strokes moving down this way and I, I gotta i gotta fix this wrist this wrist really needs help okay Ugh. you know what this looks like you guys ever eat those like sheets of tofu it kind of looks like that <laughs> 
th that's not very common, but in, in Chinese cuisine, they make these like thin strips of bacon. They're really good. They're like really tasty and like soft and chewy. Oh my God, I love that sauce. Oh, I've been craving tofu because where I live here, we don't have tofu. Like when I get to Salt Lake City, we will, but I'm in Mount Pleasant right now. So that's not really happening. Yeah, I know, Ronuk. I need to put in my rug of tone. Oh my God, I just don't feel... Ah, it's stupid pinky. Is that... Something's bothering me over here. You know what I think it is? I think... Oh, shoot, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. Maybe this is too wide and... Oh, is it the pinky's too high? Yeah, like something is wonky about this. That's why I was like a little bit hesitant to go in and do the tone because that looks worse. Shoot. Okay, crap. Hang on. Maybe it's more around here. I'm so confused. I think that uh, this is like one of those things like you fix one thing and then you got to fix eight other things. It's like, oh, come on. And then the anchor you thought was helping really is not helping. And all that stuff. Okay, you know what? I'm going to do the rug of tone anyway. Like, I don't feel ready for it at all. So actually, what I'm going to do now, because I've been drawing for a little bit, I'm actually going to go in and sharpen this a little bit more because it's not as soft and as round as I had it. So I'm just going to spend a little bit of time doing that on the sandpaper. Okay, that should be a little bit better. Okay, now let's get in here and start adding my rug of tone. So you can see that this is why I sharpen my colored pencil the way that I do. Because if I tried to draw with just like a regular tip, it would be really hard. Like you would get all these like strokes. And the thing is, I think what's important about the rug of tone is that you don't see strokes. Like if, if I saw like lines in my tone, I think it would be problematic. So that's why I do that like long sharpen and then I do the sandpaper. Because like this, you really can get a rug of tone. Like if you were just using a plain colored pencil, you wouldn't be able to do that. Okay, so let's get that in. It does help to go in different directions. So if you are drawing this way for a little bit, go this way, because sometimes even with this, you can still get something that does feel very strokey. And I don't tend to like that very much. Okay, so maybe a little bit more tone here. God, I did not get very far in this. Like, look, I only have three minutes. But I think what I might do after this is start another one because I definitely am feeling much more warmed up. And then the last one, I, I really will like spend time actually like really working it. Let's see where that goes. At the very least right now, I got my hand moving and I got myself started and that's all that matters. Again, you guys, it's like, what, what purpose does this drawing serve? The, this drawing is not gonna be spectacular. And I get it, I know. I mean, I guess I feel sort of different about it because I'm the one leading the draw along. And so it's like, I'm not that heavily invested in these drawings. And that does make a big difference, I think. Okay. You know what? This little patch of tone is pretty important. So I'm going to pop that in there. Okay. So at, at the very least, we have form, right? Like form is fine as long as I just have some of that form. And then I'll get in there and start yeah, actually there's a little bit of tone here. I think this might be like where the impression of the vein is. So I'm just gonna do a little bit there and then stroke that in. I don't know, like I don't like the thumb. Like the thumb is really bugging me. It's like, ugh. all right, I probably should not think about it. Yeah, I really should not. See how hard it is? I can't even take my own stupid advice. Okay, <laughs> it's a lot easier. Like sometimes I'll complain about stuff to my husband and I'm like, this is bothering me so much and I don't know what to do. And you know, he always says to me, he's always like, well, what would you say to one of your students if they were saying that? I'm like, Ugh. I would tell them this, this, and this. He's like, yeah, so do that. I'm like, I can't though. It's hard. <laughs> I'm like, so much easier to tell people what to do than to do it yourself. What I'm doing right now, guys, is I'm picking out the darker sections and this is way too high. Jeez. I think I messed that up. Okay. There's this weird like crinkly line that comes down the middle. Yeah, I'm definitely not benefiting from the colored pencil today because it is, I, I can really see it's slowing me down and I'm not moving as much, but you know, I got to adjust. I, I can't just blame it on the colored pencil all the time. I think that's kind of dumb. 
you know, it's like people are like, my paper was too smooth. I'm like, who cares? Shut up and draw. Like, <laughs> like it doesn't matter. You just have to react to what you have going on. Okay. All right. At the very, okay, 38 seconds. At the very least, let, let's just pop in some of these like darker shades. So at least we can kind of get the overlap that I was talking about earlier, just to show a bit better some of the foreshortening that's going on. And then I'll feel a little bit better about that. Okay, maybe a little bit. All right. That's it. Jeez, I, I did not get far, you guys. I feel really sad that that was a 15 minute pose. All right, whatever. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> okay, let me come and see what you guys are talking about in the chat and throw in your questions. Let me know what you guys are thinking because it's so fun to draw with other people, isn't it? It's like, yeah, I totally am fine watching an X-Men movie and drawing by myself. But it's different when you have people with you. It really makes a big difference, I think. People need the community. It's very, very important. Okay, let's see what people are talking about. Mina Carroll is saying, don't overthink it. That is really good advice, <laughs> Mina. <laughs> like, I really, oh my God. Like I and well, my issue, you guys, is that I ruminate sort of a lot, which is really not a good thing. So actually a lot of the time, what I have to do when I'm drawing, I have to be like mildly distracted. Like if I'm just in a room with myself, it's actually really hard. So actually having you guys here really does make a, a very, very big difference in my opinion. Okay. Let's see what people are talking about. Eric Lee says this was a big struggle, had to adjust the proportions of the palm a bunch. Karen A says slightly less sausage. Okay, that's an improvement. Definitely we can take that. And Atta Girl says you say you don't do abstract, but this hand is abstract. Well, I wouldn't say that I don't think abstractly sometimes because for sure that's something you sort of have to do especially when they draw the human figure. Tell me you guys, if you do this as well, I find that if I'm thinking to myself, I am drawing a hand it has to look like a hand. I can't do it because just psychologically speaking, I'm putting too much emphasis on the product and wanting it to look like a hand. And so what I usually do is I'll try hard just to say, okay, the hand is a series of shapes. It's a series of forms that I'm trying to organize. And so when I think about it more abstractly, that helps. I guess what I was talking about was the result. Like my end result is not abstract because that's just not my thing. Let's see what people are saying. Looks like Aaron Moore took some of the lessons. You said foreshortening is going to look weird. You should let it look weird. Yeah, I should. I know, I know I should take my own advice. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Amanda McCann says, yeah, really hard to stay light and hold back on the dark. And Finley is saying my 15 minute hand looks far better than the five minute one, but it still looks a little sausagey. You have a lot of sausagey drawings today. I guess we'll have to see in the discord what you guys mean by that. I don't know. Mine was just like tofu sheets. So whatever. Um, let's see. Slepnir says, I have to think of it as a shape, not as body parts. And Annette is saying, having a good time, but my hand is crazy. Oh God, you guys, nothing like yesterday. I was drawing with a razor blade. I don't know what it is, but I think it's just like the pressure of it. But my fingers were like tingling afterwards. That was like really icky. Like I, I did not like that at all. And by the way, you guys, I would love it. Post the stuff you do today on Instagram, tag us and use hashtag artcraftshare. I will show them in our Instagram stories. I think it's really, really fun for people to take a look at that. And W315 says lots of great concrete tips today. Mine doesn't look like I spent 15 minutes on it. I don't think mine does either, but it's like, whatever. <laughs> okay, let's see. Ron Nook is saying, I love how you managed to stay light for this long time. I happen to go in darker soon. And then it's all haywire, if not downhill. Well, you know what I think it is, Ron Nook? I think it's like, you pay for it later. It's like, if you get too angsty about wanting to like, oh, move along, move along, it, it's hard. But the thing is, you guys, if you wait and you really start to feel a little bit more secure about it, 
oh man, when you put down those dark lines, it feels good. It's like, it's like, you know, do you guys ever do this with candy? Like I used to always save all the red ones for last because, you know, the red ones are the good ones. And then you're like eating the yucky ones first. But then when you get to eat the red ones, it's just like, oh my God, it feels good. It's great. By the way, you guys, I just discovered Trader Joe's has these new Swedish fish gummies. And oh my God, I really wish I did not know about those. <laughs> it's really not, not helpful. This is a comment from Swarnareka. I'm sorry, can't pronounce people's names. I'm planning on making an art piece in which bloody teeth are scattered everywhere, but I'm confused about which medium to use. What would you suggest? I have a lot of teeth-based nightmares. You should look at my Instagram because we have a lot in common. For me, it's not my teeth, it's my gums, but I've actually done a lot of drawings about that. I would say experiment. I, I don't think you really know until you see it. Like you can think in your head, oh, watercolor would be nice, but it's like, you don't know. So I would just say, get out a whole bunch of supplies that you think you might use and do sketches and all different. And I bet you anything, the solution is going to show itself really well. Blue Wolf Spirit is saying, what is it with artists and candy? It might just be me, Blue Wolf Spirit, because, oh God, I eat way too much candy and chocolate. It's really not a good thing. <laughs> 10,000 crows is feeling it with us in the teeth. I have nightmares that my teeth will fall out. Well, yeah, mine probably are on the verge of falling out any minute anyway. So it's like kind of in my near future, which is really a bummer. So anyway, guys. Okay, let's do another one. And let's, let's like really work on this one, okay? And I mean, in terms of stick with it, even if you don't like it, don't cheat, okay? Some of you guys are gonna start and go, I don't like, stick with it, okay? Because actually there is a very tough thing about sticking with a drawing. Like tell me in the chat, do you guys ever feel like within five minutes you just wanna start over again? I think that's very common. And staying the course with a drawing and saying to yourself, you know what, I can do more. I can fix this. It's hard, it's much easier, I think, to just like give up and then start something else. But that's not always the best solution, you guys. So I definitely recommend, um, let's just stay the course, okay? Let's do it. Okay, so let's do this. Let's set the timer to 20 minutes. And I'm definitely gonna work on this longer than 20 minutes, but um, we'll just do 20 minute spurts and then I'll check the chat in between and see how you guys are doing. Okay, actually, I forgot to move my microphone. So I'm sorry if that last session, I was not as loud. Okay, let me get back into my drawing position. Okay, and I have to get my paper and my board. Where's my paper? Guys, I have like no paper. <laughs> I really need art supplies. Usually I'm not this tapped out, but this time around, everything's in storage. Okay, let me get to our drawing scene. Okay, so let's move on to the next image, which is going to be this one. Oh man, are you serious? Why does it have to be the one that's upside down? Oh, so stupid, I really should like think this through. <laughs> I'm always like, oh, I want Brady. I want hands in all different directions. And then I like sit down, I'm like, nah, I don't know why. <laughs> okay, let's see what I have. I think I'm gonna use this one. This, this one's a little bit too red, so let's get started. Okay. All right, I'm gonna draw this one pretty big because especially for one I'm really gonna spend time with, I think that's pretty important. Okay. I feel sharper now. I, I feel like I'm seeing the whole, actually, let me move. I'm gonna draw it more over here because then you guys can see a little bit better. So let's move the hand over here and let's just get in the big shape of that palm and I'm not going to forget our thumb this time and I'm just gonna I'm not going to draw the fingers I'm just sort of drawing the direction that they're in it kind of looks like a duck foot <laughs> that's okay all right and then here is the arm coming up this way there's a really cool angle in this pose so I definitely want to get that like, especially the, th the thumb is so important, you guys. You know, I wonder if that's the reason why I was having trouble with that last pose is maybe like the thumb was just not, I was ignoring it. And so I paid the price. 
that's what happens. Okay, let me, um, I kind of move it down. I feel like it's a little bit too high. Okay, let's move it down. Yeah, you guys change the position, okay? Don't settle for less because positioning of your drawing, like on your sheet of paper, like that's not something you can quickly change later on. I can do it now because I stopped myself. Like, did you guys see, I only drew this for like 30 seconds and I realized early on that it wasn't a good placement, okay? So don't just say, oh, I drew it there, I gotta live with it. You don't, you can change it. And guys, I'm not using an eraser, okay? Like I'm just drawing right over my lines because actually for me, I just have found that if I use an eraser at the beginning, number one, it could become a crutch. And number two, I do think it like breaks up my rhythm a little bit. Like if I get an eraser and I start erasing, I feel like I, I start thinking about things differently. And so just having this like very fluid motion where I'm only using the colored pencils, I'm not touching anything else is super helpful. This is a cool pose though. I mean, as hard as this pose is gonna be, I do like it a lot, so that's cool. Um, and guys, I hope the reference photos are helping you because I didn't, I wasn't sure at first that they were going to be worth doing. Like I was like, are people actually going to use these? Is it actually going to be helpful? But it seems like people are really using them because there's just not a lot online. Oh dear. Oh no. Okay. <laughs> we gotta, I gotta step back and look at a distance. Okay. Fingers are definitely huge. Look at baguettes. Jeez. Oh, I really want a baguette. Is anybody here in France? Like, <laughs> I, oh my God. Like, you, after you've had a baguette in France, it's like every other bread tastes like styrofoam afterwards. It's like, oh man, do I miss good fresh bread in Europe? Or actually, when I was in New York, there was a really amazing Middle Eastern bakery and they made amazing pita bread. Like, oh my God. I mean, everything else tastes like cardboard by comparison. That really makes me miss that. Uh, bakery was so good. Okay. What? This is strange. Everybody see the, the way the thumb is sort of like, you know what's weird? It, it's like this hand is so much higher up and this one's sort of like squeezed between and then this one's sort of like upwards. So what I'm doing is I'm like comparing them and I'm noticing also that this hand is like way lower. Does everybody see the tip? So this is what I'm doing. Like I don't measure you guys. I just go in and I say, okay, this finger is higher than this one. Actually, it's a little bit more. And then I say, okay, this finger segment is here. This finger segment is here. And that means this one by comparison is here. Guys, measuring with your eyes so much faster is way more efficient. Okay, I'm definitely not, see, I was picking. Guys, I am not drawing enough. Like I am not in good drawing shape. I really need, I need to do more light drawing. Like I, I wish there was like an extra day of the week where I could just be like, that is my day to do nothing but light drawing. Like, God, I would do so much better, but I just don't have time. There's like too many things going on right now. Um, I mean, the, the biggest thing right now is just all the teachers are having a hard time with remote learning. And so I'm trying to help them with that and also, a lot of places are hiring me to do training, and so I'm just like horribly busy right now. Okay. All right, maybe, let me just, I really feel like I need to spend more time looking. Uh, is it hands? I hope you guys are doing this with me. Like, like, at the very least, if you can't get out of your chair, just like push yourself back and just Real, like I really need to look harder. It's it's the it's the foreshortening is like really hard. I mean that's probably again why I'm drawing slower because I I feel like I I can't not see the like sometimes you can sort of get away with not looking so carefully but today I'm not feeling that today I feel like I really have to look carefully and you know something else that I'm noticing too about my drawing which I don't like I don't like I'm starting to go over the lines over and over again, and that's not good. And I think I need to be more careful that there are some lines that I don't emphasize the same way because I don't want all my lines to be the same. Like, I don't want them to all be this darkness. Like, I'm trying to thinking about like how here it's lighter and so I might not want so many lines. So this idea of sort of like, again, tracing the figure, not a great idea, guys. It's a lot better when you can control it. 
I found this very strange. I think what I need is this like little crinkle of wrinkles that's up there. And it's, it's like really compressed, like all the skin, especially like this little mark here is like very compressed, a lot of good compression. <laughs> Remember we talked about this, the compression of the skin, the tension. Yeah, so I would say if you guys have not seen, so we have two hand lectures. We have one about foreshortening. I mean, that one's not just the hand, that one has other stuff too but we do have the one that's just about the structure of the hand. So I recommend you guys take a look at that so you pick up all those little tips. Okay, let's really start to emphasize some of these lines because I feel like I need to organize this a little bit better. Oh, I feel like the line work is just like making my drawing look kind of robotic and I don't like that. That's not good. Okay, let's just at the very least I mean, I have to remind myself, I, I don't have to do everything right now. Like I, I can build up to it a little bit more slowly. It's sort of, again, that like guilt trip. They're like, you're not drawing rigorously enough. You, you don't have enough motion and gesture. <laughs> it's like my little voice in my head that likes to tell me that. I think it's almost time for rugged tone. I just, yeah, I don't feel that secure about this drawing because it's just, I'm gonna move that down a little bit. Get the wrist a little bit better. Okay, let me just step back because it's just a couple more. Like, I, I guess the thing is, like, I don't want when I put down the rug of tone to lose everything. So, what I'm doing right now is I'm just jumping around in anywhere where I see like a really dark, prominent line. Oh, crap, there it goes. I knew that was going to happen at some point. All right, time to take a break and sharpen. <laughs> see, that that's again, it's like you can't. With a colored pencil, you can't press as hard because if you do that, oh wait, I forgot to sharpen it. Shoot. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna switch to this other colored pencil because this one's ready to go. Because it actually actually does take some time to do that. Okay, so this, let's push that in. Jeez, this one is like too sharp. Ugh, that's actually kind of annoying. All right, maybe, you know what? I'm gonna use this blunter one. It, it actually is helpful to have like a blunt one and a sharp one because Sometimes you don't want it to be that sharp. Sometimes you want it to be a little bit softer. And it's also sort of fun if you have like different colors of colored pencils because this one's a little bit more orange. And so I can draw with it in a slightly different way, which I do like. So this I really should emphasize because this is like really dark up here. And there's all these folds. This one, I just, I don't want to lose these lines when I put in my rugged tone. So maybe this can get more emphasized. Yeah. So if you guys look at it, my drawings really do not emphasize the contour. I really am in the figure. I think that's the key thing that I see is people are tracing the figure. They're not actually in the figure building it. And th if this helps you guys, this helps me. Like I tell myself, I'm not drawing, I'm building. You're building form. So if you think about it from that point of view, sometimes it's a little bit more helpful. And I will say guys, one thing that I think is cool about these draw alongs is honestly, when I was in class, brick and mortar classroom, I never did that. Like I never did a drawing from beginning to end because I always wanted to like walk around and talk to the students. But now I'm like, you know, maybe it's good that people get to see me work a drawing from beginning to end. I just felt guilty. Like when I was in the classroom, I didn't want to do that because I felt like I was just, um, I don't know, clowning around <laughs> and like not teaching enough. But I think there is some value to watching somebody finish a drawing from beginning to end. I think there is something about that that is useful. Okay, rugged tone time, guys, definitely. Like, even if I don't like everything about this, I still, I need to put it in because it's just, it's going too long without the rugged tone. So let's put that in. Remember, going in all different directions. What I really wish I had was like a pad of nice soft paper because I'm, going right on top of a drawing board, which I actually don't recommend because it's harder to make a nice smooth area of tone. Jeez, this colored pencil is misleading. It's like purple. I thought it was like red, but it's totally purple. Weird. Okay, <laughs> I guess that's what we're doing. All right. And then at some point, what I probably will do, you guys, is we'll switch up media. And when I get my paints out, I mean, I'm hoping once I get my paints out of storage, we can actually do some paint alongs. Wouldn't that be fun? 
because it seems like a lot of people want painting content, but painting is, it's kind of hard because you need the facility and you need space. And I don't know, one thing that I have done in the past is I've done just for drawings with acrylic paint, like just straight black acrylic paint. That's really fun. So maybe we could do a draw along with that. I'm just like challenged right now in terms of art supplies. I just don't have the access right now, but I should pretty soon. Hopefully stuff gets in storage. You know, if I ever move again, I am totally not going to tell myself that I don't need my cookbooks because I do. I really need my cookbooks and I really need my art supplies. I was like, I don't need these colored pencils. I totally do. Okay, so this finger has very visible shading. And there's a lot of cool, like there's actually cast shadow here, which is pretty cool. I'm not going to do it right now, but I am definitely noticing the differences between a cast shadow and a form shadow. And I do have a video with Michael Fassbender that talks about lighting in a portrait that I recommend you guys take a look at because it is very helpful to know the differences. A lot of people just think, oh, light and shadow, it's all the same. It's not. There's actually a lot going on that I think would be good for people to think about. I don't like this color. This color is really bugging me. I, I wish it wasn't so purple. I thought I was going to have a little more orange in it, but... I don't know, maybe I'll blend in some other colors later on, but for now I'm just gonna block this in like that. And if I squint and I look, by the way, tell me you guys, do you squint or am I the weirdo? <laughs> like I squint a lot. Like most of the time I am not looking at things with like a normal eye. Most of the time I am squinting because I, I find it hard to look carefully if I don't squint. Okay, I just want to organize these folds in here because I know I'm going to get lost if I don't. So this is actually, this is like a pretty dark area here. And uh, what's going on here? I think this is a little bit closer to the finger. I don't know. This might not be like one of my like rigorous drawings. It might be one that's a little bit more rendered. And that's okay. I, I think it is good for you guys to see me working in different ways. So I, I'm not just a one trick pony. Like I, I think, oh shoot, that's way too high. I think um, as a teacher, oh shoot, oh crap, that's so annoying. All right, I guess we're going to burn umber. <laughs> this is definitely like rainbow. Okay, who's broken their pencil? Please tell me. See, I, I don't even think I'm pressing that hard and I'm already breaking it. So that's a, <laughs> I, maybe I shouldn't draw so aggressively. Okay, let's, all right, it's, it's getting more established. I'm not getting excited yet though. I don't know, maybe this is the plateau, you guys. Maybe this is where you're kind of like, ah, yeah, I'm not that thrilled. Because I, I do think a lot of drawings are like that. I think a lot of drawings, it's like you start all excited and then the honeymoon's over, and then you realize, oh my God, it's actually a lot of work. <laughs> like, maybe I need to put more effort into this. Yeah. Uh, I gotta come back to the thumb. The th why am I ignoring the thumb so much? This is not good. Like the thumb is so important, you guys. You, you need it to like really organize things. You know what else? I'm actually gonna draw this in here. I, I don't usually hold my pencil like this, but I feel like I need a little more control because this one area, there's like this very compressed area that I wanna, shoot, I still think, I think I'm making it too like, I think I'm pressing down. I'm not making it round enough, I don't know. God, I feel so critical today. I feel like the last drawing stream, I was like, la la la, drawing. And now today I'm like, not. <laughs> doing that so much. <laughs> now I'm sort of fussing a little. Try not to fuss guys. I don't recommend it. It's not a good idea. It's not necessary. You don't have to do that. But of course I'm doing it. Today is the, I admit I'm a hypocritical teacher day. That's what it is. <laughs> um, I suspect some teachers do feel that way. Maybe not everybody, but I definitely do. Where I'm like, oh man, I told the students to do this. I'm not even doing it. That's kind of stupid, isn't it? <laughs> All right, let me see, shoot, that one's a little bit too dark. I think what I'll do is when I'm looking at the chat, I'll go in and I'll um, sharpen a whole bunch of my pencils because they're definitely not doing well right now. And I probably should spend more time up here. 
I've not been doing that. This one's a little bit dark, but if I go in real light, maybe that's good. Yeah, like these Prismacolors are really crumbly and soft. I feel like if I were using my other ones, I might have an easier time. I mean, isn't it crazy? There's such a range of colored pencils out there. And it's like, I don't know that I've really found one that I like. I, I feel like a lot of the times I just need to use like several at the same time. Okay, so what I'm doing now, I'm just evening out the tone because I did one pass, which was good, but I definitely need some more going on here. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna start putting in some line work and start to define a little bit better what's going on with the fingers. So you can see, I think because I'm sort of past the, the quick, like, okay, lock it in type of pose, that I do switch to the more typical drawing position. And you know what, this actually feels good. Like, why was why didn't I do this sooner? Like, I should have done more. Because sometimes this feels stiff, but other times this does. I don't know, I guess it sort of depends on what you're drawing, it's, it's tricky. Okay, but I don't know, now I'm starting to get, I feel a little better now. Isn't it weird? Like when you draw, it's such a roller coaster. It's like one second, you're like, oh, this sucks. And then you're like, yeah, that's not, that's pretty good. Cool. All right, I sort of lost this finger. And so maybe later I'm gonna have to go in with um, an eraser and kind of pull that out because I feel like I sort of lost. Th this finger is really, it really does jut out a lot. And so I, I definitely, I mean, there's a couple of things you can do. You can definitely like darken what's around it, I mean, that makes a big difference. But for sure, that this finger has to like pop in the context of this pose. Well, I'm excited to work on one because sometimes like, as much as I like demoing the beginning part, because the beginning part is so important, there is something really satisfying about like finishing it and feeling like, okay, it went as far as it could go and I, I did not stop too soon. Because there's only so much of that you can do, like you can't do that forever. Like that's not gonna happen all the time. Okay. Oh, I need to pop this out a little bit more. This might end up getting messy. I don't know, maybe, you know what I might do, what I'm thinking? I might actually try to construct this out of cross hatching because I love cross hatching. Like to me, cross hatching is so fun. I mean, what sometimes I do is I'll layer cross hatching over tone and then I'll, I'll just keep doing that. And sometimes that's really fun. So maybe I'll, I'll think about showing you guys that. Cause uh, I don't know, I've just been thinking about cross hatching a lot lately. All right, feeling better guys. I feel like maybe it was the hand positioning. Like I feel like once I changed the hand positioning that was better. Oh, okay, let's do reset. Okay, so let me go over to my talk scene and I will put aside my drawing board and let's see what you guys are talking about in the chat and ask me questions. Tell me how's it going. Love to hear how you guys are doing with your drawings today. Okay, let's uh, move this slide because I think we need Michael on the screen. I mean, Chadwick Boseman, I think you're great too. And it's really heartbreaking the fact that he passed away, but I want Michael right now. Okay, let's see what people are talking about. I'm gonna scroll up and, oh wow, we got a lot of teeth conversations up here, okay. Um, Emerald Kitty says, yep, looking at the relations between two and then another with just your eyes is so much faster. Tell me in the chat if any of you guys in the past, if you have used those proportion systems, the measuring and Loomis stuff. Tell me if you've done that because you know what? Here's what I think. If that works for you, fine. That's fine. You know, do whatever works for you. I just happen to think that using your eyes is much more efficient and long-term is a better skill because it doesn't just help you with the figure. It helps you with lots of other things. Whereas measuring things on the human figure, that doesn't really help you with anything else. So if you learn how to train your eye, you can draw anything. And that's really the way it should be. It shouldn't be, oh, I'm so bad at drawing unicorns, but I'm really good at drawing piranhas. Like it doesn't work that way. Like observational drawing skills, that's what they are. You apply them to anything, it does not matter what you're drawing. I mean, I think sometimes 
it's the psychological baggage of, oh, I'm drawing a face. And so it feels harder for that reason. But the skills you guys use to look and observe, it's the same. None of that is really any different. Let's see. Add a girl says knuckles really help us an anchors. Absolutely. And Angie says, I was lucky enough to have teachers who said the ridiculous measuring systems will always stuffen up your drawings because they make you overthink things. Always use your eyes and adjust. Okay. W315 says art sticks are good because you have one end sharp and one end blunt and also use the side. Oh, that's a good idea. Maybe I should try those out. That is really cool. Okay. What else are people talking about? Nikki A says, wouldn't that hand be easier to draw if you rotated the image upside down? It's not always possible, but it looks like it with this one. You know something? That's a really good thing that you brought up, Nikki, because I think sometimes, let's say you're doing a painting and it's a person that's hanging upside down, okay? And so people would say, well, if you just flip it and then you're not drawing the person while they're upside down, that would be easier. I think it's sort of a problem because ultimately, I mean, I'm doing a drawing today. I'm not doing like a full out painting composition, but if I was doing a painting of the hand that we're looking at today, I think it's sort of weird because it like messes with my eyes and I'm not really like looking at the drawing truly for what it is. So I'm not sure it would be easier for me just from a mindset point of view, because I do want to see what it's going to look like when it's in the right position. Okay, Miranda says, <laughs> I got so excited moving my wrist that I accidentally threw away my pencil. Awesome. Really cool. And Manta Ray Bands says, I've recently started an oil painting for my portfolio. I watch your videos 24 seven. I'm playing the hand in my piece. Thanks so much for all you do. Well, very cool. And Manta, if you are preparing an art school portfolio, we are accepting portfolios to be critiqued live on YouTube. So if you don't know where that link is, I can send it to you later in Discord. Or if you want to comment on this video later, I can send it to you later. But you guys might think about that because we do offer portfolio critiques for purchase, but I know not everybody can afford that. So we do have a couple slots where people could get one for free if it's critiqued live on our YouTube channel. Carolyn's Art Adventure says, I've done some Loomis stuff. I found it helped me organize where things are and to look for relationships. That's good. Yeah. I mean, if that's doing it for you, then absolutely. And Xavier, Ivana, sorry, can't say your name. This last pose is a lot easier than the last one. I was either really struggling with the pose or really needed a warm up. I bet you anything it was a warm up because I did that first five minute drawing and I did not feel warmed up. It's, it, it's a really physical experience. I mean, that's why I always tell people that drawing is so similar to athletics. I mean, in terms of being warmed up, doing it regularly. I mean, I don't draw as well if I only draw once every three months, the same thing. If I don't work out for three months, you're in pain <laughs> the next day that you actually start to draw. And so I really do think about it as something athletic. I think that's pretty, important to realize. Let's see. Tom Cuke says, I did a lithograph with a hand and fish in it after the live streams. I'm really happy with. Well, Tom Cuke, I would love for you to post that in the Discord after the stream, because I'm always interested, not just in what you guys do during the live streams, but what did you get from the live stream? What is the raw skill that you got that you were then able to apply to another artwork that was maybe more independently driven. Because you know something, while life drawing is so helpful and so good to practice, you can't only do that. Like eventually you have to figure out, well, if I want to put a hand into a painting, how does that actually work? Because this is raw skills, but then you have to get those raw skills and actually put them in a place. And I think that's very, very important, you guys. Let's see, Seven Angelic says, I like measuring in relation. The bit is the same as that. This one is twice as big. Yeah, I think that proportions, you, you have to sort of like think it through. I, I guess that's what I don't like about the measuring is the measuring, I think when people see the numbers and they see the measuring, they say, oh, I don't have to look anymore. I, I can just rely on this and it will take care of it for me. But you know something? 
a lot of the drawings that are like really tightly measured, they're oftentimes not very good drawings because they're stiff and robotic looking. And I just, this could just be my own personal style. I just happen to like drawings that are more rigorous, that are looser. Not everybody wants that. Some people want something that's a little bit tighter, but I just find with the measuring and stuff, I, I feel it's a little bit too constricting. So I have a little bit of trouble with that. Okay, guys, sh let's work on this. definitely another 20 minutes. I might possibly do it another 20 minutes beyond. I have to see how far I get. So let's get started with another 20 minutes and let's see how we do. Okay, so let me get back. Oh, I was gonna sharpen, I totally did not. Okay, I'll just take a few minutes to sharpen and you guys can talk amongst yourselves about, I don't know, what's, what's the topic for today? Maybe the topic for today is muffins because uh, I have not had a good muffin for a while and I'm sad about that, you guys. That, that makes me very, very sad. Okay, let's go back to the drawing stream. Okay, let's get my drawing up there. And I am gonna, I really like these two colors. Like this one's sort of like a dark burnt sienna and the other one's like a little bit more orangey. I don't know, I guess it's because it like reminds me of those Michelangelo drawings, which are so much better than mine. That's all right, it's fine. He's Michelangelo, it's a little bit unfair. You know what makes me mad about Michelangelo? Guys, he carved the freaking David when he was 25. I'm like, screw you, Michelangelo. That's just obnoxious. Like, nobody should be doing stuff like that. Like that and also stupid dirt. Oh my God. Hang on a sec. Okay, sharpening that pencil. Stupid dirt. He's like, here's my self portrait when I'm 13. It's like better than anything any of you guys could do. <laughs> Thanks. That's great, dirt. Thanks for showing off. I don't know, do you think if you were that good that you're like, oh my God, I'm so good. Like, do you know it? Or is it the same thing as what we do where we ruminate and question ourselves? I bet it's like that. You, you I don't know, then again, guys, if you carve the Pieta, you probably know your hot stuff, right? I don't know. Tell me if you've seen the Pieta. It's the one that's in the St. Peter's Basilica in the Vatican. It's sad because the Pieta is a sculpture. It's actually, let me sharpen this. The Pieta, it's behind glass, which makes me really sad. Like you cannot get close to it. Whereas the David, you actually can get very close to. And actually, you know what I like better than the David is those slave sculptures that are in the hallway that leads you down to the David. And so I actually really like those a lot because they're his unfinished sculptures and they're creepy. Like they're really weird. You, you feel like you're looking at people come on out of stone. It's very strange. Okay, hang on, just sharpen this. Okay, I can't believe I did that without breaking it. Okay, that's a little bit better. I think I need to carve this one a little bit more. Okay. Yeah, the, the Pieta was so sad. I was like, oh my God, not only is it behind glass, but it's like behind glass and far away. Like you cannot get even close to really seeing it. And as a sculptor, I just found that very depressing. So that was a bummer. I think I'm almost done. Okay, just a little bit more time on the sandpaper. Guys, I want to go to Europe. I'm so sad. I don't know that we're any of us are going to be able to travel for a long time, but I'll be there in a heartbeat the second that we can. Okay, let's just dump off all this stuff. Okay, let's do another 20 minutes and see where we can get this. So let's start the timer. Okay, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna look at it for a minute because I did not look at it for a while. This looks a little cottage cheesy. I might change that a little bit. I, I don't know. You know what I gotta do? I, I really gotta just bulk up the tone. Okay, so let's just do that for a little bit. For example, there's like much darker tones in here. Actually, this is really beautiful. Does everybody see this like a little pocket of reflected light here? Like that is nice. And actually I just colored right over it. So I don't know that I'm gonna be able to erase this. Color pencil really does not erase very well. Oh, that looks terrible. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna do that anymore. <laughs> but I think what I need to do now, okay, let, let's do this. We have to start thinking about planes, guys. Planes in the hand to make it more sculptural, okay? So what I'm gonna do now 
is start to pull out some of the shadow core. You guys have probably heard me talk about that before, which is the darkest part of the shadow. And also I got to really start picking out the stuff that's like bright, because like I said before, actually, let's get this in here. This definitely needs something. So if I go in here, there's this one like pretty dark line. All right, this, this feels good. I, I'm liking this. This is good. Let me really dig this in. Because I sort of feel like what's nice about the rugged tone is you can go in and you just like darken a couple of areas and it's much faster than trying to like match the shadow colors. I, I think that's, for me, what's the most helpful about my rugged tone. And then where does that go? Is that, hang on a sec, I'm getting confused again. It's like so many wrinkles. Okay, th this is a little bit more of a diagonal. So let's do that. I need to pump up my energy. I feel like my energy level right now is not great in the drawing, but let's start looking for a shadow core. There's a shadow core here on the thumb because it's a little bit of reflected light. It's not that easy to see, but it's definitely in there. And then here it's quite dark as well. I still feel like I'm building guys. Like I, I don't think I'm even close to like getting things to where I want them to be. And I might just, you know, I have these like darker browns. I might use these for the like really dark sections because I, I need these areas to like pop way more than they are right now. Who's having fun, by the way? I think I'm sort of having fun now. I wasn't before, but I am now. <laughs> it's an emotional roller coaster, right? Being an artist. Okay. See, this is like really dark. Okay, you know what I gotta do? <clears throat> I need to simplify. I, I think I'm, I gotta, I gotta see planes. We need planes, guys. Okay, so let's get more aggressive. Put in those planes, and I'm squinting a lot. Like here, this is a pretty dark patch of shadow. And I gotta really push, like, like in here, there's like all this like mushy skin which has to get more dramatic. And this spot is very bright actually. So here I'm gonna press down harder because here's the thing guys, I love black. <laughs> like I just love pressing down hard on things. It's just, it's hard for me sometimes because I wanna do it and then I like regret it that I do it too soon. So it, it is for me, it's like, I do have to hold myself back quite a bit. So this line here that's coming down the middle of the palm it's actually a lot crunchier than I had it. So I'm trying to use this like darker, you know, I might switch to this even darker one here. Ooh, that's black. Okay, I don't like that, that's too dark. Um, and, and make this a little bit less straight. I think I, I made it too straight before. And I think I'm gonna try to do what I talked about earlier, which is like really emphasizing and exaggerating what's going on. So actually here, this is really dark. This, I think I really got to just go to town on. So let's get that in so it's really dramatic. Look at this. Okay, I'm feeling better. About, see, I, I don't really like doing tone with color pencil. It kind of bothers me, but I guess that's what I have. That's what I get for not, not putting my art supplies where they should have been when I moved. Okay. Okay. How, how are people doing? You, you guys hitting the plateau or are you still moving along? Is it still, is it still obvious what you need to do? Or are you starting to question things a little bit? That's what I'm curious about because the plateau does tend to come around now, at least for a lot of people. I mean, for me, it's not really there, but I'm, I'm still like bulking up the shadows. So I, I don't really feel like I've tossed in anything that significant. But another thing you guys can do is you have to compare things. Like, does everybody see there's reflected light on the side of the pinky? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to darken the shading that's next to the pinky like this. So the pinky jumps out, but then I'm going to take this darker tone and I'm going to put in the shadow core but I'm gonna deliberately leave the side 
nice and light, so that way the reflected light is still very visible. Okay, so if you guys look at this now, actually I should make the fingernail a little bit darker like that. Okay, and if I color that in, I'll get in that plane. And I have not really gotten to the joints yet. I will eventually, but I just want to toss in. Ooh, that doesn't look good. Hang on a sec. I think it, did I make it too? I think it needs to be a little lighter at the bottom. Let, let's just fix this. Hang on a second. I think it should be more like that, right? Okay, so here we have shadow core. It's not quite smooth enough. Like I'm not very happy with that right now, but um, I'm just gonna go in and, and at least it's like there. At least it's it's been knocked in and I can say, okay, it's there. I, I don't have to stress about actually putting it in there. And I, I do think you guys, one of the things that makes color pencil slow, it's like, there's just a lot of building. Like you have to just keep adding more and more. And it's like the second I think I've done enough, there's so much more layering. So I, I guess for me, that's one of the reasons I don't use color pencil all that often because it's not, for me, it's just slow. I'm so impatient. Like I'm not a patient artist. And so I think for me using something that requires so much build up time is hard. I mean, I think that's one of the reasons probably why people like it because it's it's like, it is really um, sort of forgiving in a way because you don't have to work that fast with it. Like charcoal is not very forgiving. Charcoal is like all over the place. Okay. So what I'm trying to do now, I actually, I think I am gonna build it a little, uh, maybe I won't do cross hatching. I can't tell. It's sort of been a while since I've done cross hatching. So I don't know. We, we do have a wonderful tutorial that I've been trying to get to, but just have not had time which is a tutorial with Song Kang, who did our scratch board tutorial. And she did this amazing one with pen and pencil that honestly looks like ink wash. It's amazing. So I'm hoping to get that one released. It's just, oh my God, it's so backed up. It's ridiculous. Like, I think we have like four tutorials in the can and I, I just have not been able to do it because it's just too much right now. I need editors. <laughs> Guys, I, I feel like, you know, people are like, I wish I could own a fancy car and I wish I could have a villa in Tuscany. I mean, I'd love to have that. You know, people have stuff like, I'm like, I wish I had a crew of sound designers and video editors who were like at my beck and call. I could be like, here, do that sound mix. Have it ready for me by tomorrow. Like, I would really like that. That's like my dream just to like have all these people at my beck and call. Yeah, because villas are overrated, aren't they? <laughs> I'd much rather have a sound designer. Okay, I, I need to give this more personality. I, I don't know. I just sort of feel like it's not very expressive right now. And so maybe it's like, maybe I just need to make it a little bit less, I don't know. Maybe it's just too round. I feel like it's too rendered. Maybe that's what it is. I'm not sure. Let's see. Oh man, I'm only, ah, oh, shoot. All right, I'm starting to get stressed again, guys. <laughs> I shouldn't. All right. You know what it is? I think it's just, it takes a while to build. And like I said, I'm impatient. I don't want to spend the time building. I just want it to be built. I don't know, sometimes I fantasize about being a horrible boss, but then I'm like, that's just mean. Cause like, I watched Steve Jobs way too many times, the movie, <laughs> cause Michael Fassbender's in it. I was like, God, he was a jerk. He was so mean to people. I don't know, I guess maybe it's like a power trip to like boss people around like that, but I'm like, this is really mean. Like, I don't know that I could behave that way. Like, even if I could, I don't know if I would. All right, let's make this finger more solid on the edge because actually, does everybody see like here? I'm not even gonna emphasize that very much. I think what I'm gonna try to do is leave some of those edges softer. So that way I maybe don't have to get so dramatic about it. Man, these planes are not, I don't know, they're, they're not as, they don't have the bite that I want yet. I guess I just need to build. I think I'm just being impatient right now. Okay, like here, it's 
got this really and I'm actually, you know something though, I'm glad we're doing Color Pencil because people use Color Pencil a lot and we don't have that much content on it. I mean, we have content on it for the cat drawing tutorial, but that's not really Color Pencil in that we're not finishing something. And so maybe this is good. So at the very least we get some Color Pencil content that's not like just gesture drawing. Oh, it's hard because I want to do everything you guys. It's interesting because a lot of you guys have said to me, and I think this is a compliment, people say, oh my gosh, you have so much content. We're like, so excited. I feel like I can't even watch it all. And I'm like, dude, this is like 1% of what's in my head. Like there's so many other things I like really want to make content on. I just like don't have time to get it all done. Okay, so see here, I am starting to put in some of the wrinkles that are on the thumb because I think the thumb is sort of losing out a little bit right now. There is a little bit of reflected light, so I'm going to build a shadow core in the thumb like that. And this part I'm really going to darken because, guys, look at this. You see how the thumb like pops and this almost disappears? So this I'm really going to emphasize a lot on the edge. I can't really see the nails that well. Yeah, those are like, they're so light. Oh, my God, they're like almost not there. Okay. Yeah, this, this should be like really pronounced, shouldn't it? Okay, I'm feeling better. I, I feel like there's more going on. I, I think I do need the black though, because I'm sort of losing some of these strokes in here and I'm losing some of the compression, which I think is pretty important. So let's just take another deep dive into the center of here. I want to just really push compression because I, I love this stuff like I love all the like squishy fleshy like <laughs> I don't know I find it like very satisfying all the smushy stuff oh god is that how did that connect mm, how is that mm, how is that connecting I oh okay see here's where you really gotta look Okay, and now this line here really does push upwards more in that direction. See, now I feel like I'm getting actually like a significant foundation of colored pencil, whereas like before it was so thin. It's sort of like oil painting. Like if you guys oil paint, you know, like the first layer doesn't really do anything. And it's like even, I don't think even until the third layer or so that I really feel like anything is happening. This needs more, yeah, this is more dimensional, this little spot here. So let's build that up. And then it's tricky because there's like a vein that comes across here. And that's like really weird the way it just like crosses over the hair. Yeah, that's weird. Okay, and then there's even more like little subtle wrinkles in here that I also need to pull out. So let's see. Oh, I'm determined, guys. I, I really, I really am going to finish this drawing today. Like, for real. <laughs> Might take a while, though. So, you know, hopefully you guys can stick around. You can always catch us later on the Discord if you got other stuff to do. But it is fun when we're all live together. Let's build that up. Um, not liking that part right now. But I shouldn't judge. Don't judge yourself, guys. It's, I don't recommend it. I think I need the darker color. I was not going to do all these different colors, but you know, I'm actually kind of happy that I'm doing it now because it is starting to pop more. And I'm not so sure I would have had that range of value if I had just used the one color. Okay, now I feel like I am starting to build up and to see, you know something, I gotta erase, I, I don't like this edge. Like I actually think if I can, I might just leave this edge like empty like that. I think it might be fine because I, I really don't, see a lot in the edge here and actually I don't see a lot down here too so let me just do a quick pass of some of the sections of the hand that maybe don't need to be so visible like down here I think I'll pull out some of that and then maybe at the top I'll add a little pass because there there's a bit of tone here that I do think should be a little bit more prominent 
and then this can really see because these strokes that I put in they, they really do dissolve into that space so let me see if I can uh yeah I think I might need to just go in and do some more subtle work up here this might take a little while guys might not be the most fun thing to watch but whatever <laughs> too bad this is what you get for asking me to finish a drawing And I mean, somebody was saying earlier, I think it was last week, somebody was like, yeah, it really does feel like I'm in like a two hour long drawing class. Um, and, and, you know, now with the virtual thing, it's like people don't really have a choice. Like nobody's going to art class right now. So it's not really an option for a lot of people. But also, like, how cool is it that some of you guys are in Europe, there might be people from Asia here. I mean, so, so cool. Okay, that's starting to, see, I, I guess the thing is like, I want this to like really pop first and then I'll spread out. I guess because I need this to like really be a good anchor for the rest of it. Like, I, I guess I'm like worried that if this part in the middle, because it's the darkest, like I need it to have more substance than the other sections. I, I sort of feel like it's more important. And th this really needs to jump out. Like this is actually like one of the darkest lines of the thumb. Well, that's probably too dramatic, but whatever, that's fine. See, my whole thing, I tend to go really overboard with a lot of the darks. And so it's like, once you put like a dark something in my hand, it's like, it's all over. Like there's not a lot of <laughs> reasons for me to not go to town on something like that. And I do want to show, like, see this, like, little puffy section of skin? Let's slow down a little bit and maybe build up some of the line work. See, to me, the drawing just started. Like, I'm just starting to actually put in the stuff that makes it look like something other than a sausage and baguette. <laughs> It's getting there. It, it is. It really is. You know, it's too bad that these fingernails are not easier to draw. Fingernails are hard. I think fingernails look really weird. I think they can look fake. And it's hard because you need them to integrate, but they also have to be clear. Like if they're not clear enough, you, you really will have a hard time with it. So maybe a little bit more emphasis on this joint here. And down here, th this really needs to be darker. So let's just punch in these darks how do we get that to go and then this really needs to be like really pushy Ooh, this is a nice little moment of compression i like that and maybe some brown in the middle get that shadow pour in there the reflected light here it's not that dramatic but it's definitely in there and i don't want to leave it so you guys will also notice another thing i'm doing is like really blending a lot because you want things to be cohesive. You want one section to like flow into another and really blending those areas. That's a good way to do it. It's a lot of layering. I think drawing is all about layering. Like if you don't layer, it's, it's actually very hard to get the point across. Okay, so let's jump down here because this finger has been woefully neglected like that. It still needs a lot. Like I definitely, I think I'm gonna do another round after this for sure, because this is not, it, it's close. Like it's definitely getting there, but there's a lot of stuff. Oh, okay, here we go. All right, let me take a break and I'm going to look at the chat, see what you guys are talking about. Okay, so let's move my microphone and let's see what your questions are. Tell me how your drawing is going. Let's see. Rachel is saying, I feel like anatomy is so easy when doing it in sections like this. However, when putting it all together, the frustration leads to hands in their pockets. <laughs> yeah, you know what the key is, Rachel? Don't leave it for the last minute. I think that's usually one of the reasons why people have trouble contextualizing it is because they do everything and they do the hands last. And that can be really, really difficult. But yeah, don't don't ignore it. I think that can be very, very hard. Okay, what else are people chatting about? 
Let's see. Aaron Moore says, this looks really good. I'll have to review the rest of it later. It was great to catch you live today. Thank you so much for dropping in. And Ayane says, I usually do comic markers as a base and color pencils on top, I guess to get more realism and also to speed things up. Oh, that is really cool. Do, do you mean Copic markers or comic markers? I don't know if that was a typo, but that's actually really cool. I wonder, oh, I should try that. <laughs> Maybe one of the streams I could start with some of those Tombows or something and build the colored pencil on top. Yeah, that would be really cool. Finley says, my drawing is really coming together. I used red and indigo for the shading and it's really popping. And Ayane is saying, I'm about to join the Discord and post. Are you going to view our drawings there? Well, what I'll do is after I finish my drawing and I end the stream, I will go into Discord into the draw along channel and you guys can put, you can post anytime. Like you don't have to wait for me to get in there, but yeah, I do go in there and I see it and I can chat with you guys live. And so that'll be fun, but definitely I'm going to do another 20 minute after this. Cause it's not close. I think it's very um, much a drawing that needs more. Kate says, am I the only one that struggles with hands and pockets? I always find the arms look out of proportion. Yeah. I mean, probably what we should do at some point, is show you guys how to do these anatomical studies and then to actually apply them into like a finished figure composition. I mean, that would take a while. That would take several streams probably for us to figure out, but I think that might be good. And also next, not next, this Wednesday, we are doing a stream that is about how to shoot your own references. So even though of course you can use ours, it's better because sometimes a particular pose or a view that you really want to use and you need to be able to do your own. So really important for that. Carolyn's Art Adventure says, have you done any demos on toned paper? I did. There was one maybe a month ago where I did drawings of portraits on black paper. So I was using like white chalk on top of it. So yeah, you can check that out. If you don't know, you can't find it. Just look at the live drawing tutorials playlist and you'll find it in there. And Shilpa, says, I'm new to the channel, thinking of maybe doing the art dare. Do the two colors mean mixing them is okay? Blue and yellow, so green is okay. No, sorry, Shilpa. It's just two straight colors. So if you want to use green in another color, or if you want to use blue and yellow, that's fine, but they have to be separate. What I would recommend, Shilpa, is look at the art dare announcement video, because I show lots of examples. We talk about movie posters. So yeah, check out that video. Louisville Spirit says, I finally, I started over, finally got something a lot more proportional, easier to work with a solid foundation rather than fix a bad one. Yeah, sometimes that happens if you're like, ugh, this is not happening. <laughs> like, it's hard. It's hard to know when is the time for me to up and quit because sometimes it's like, you don't know, maybe like five minutes later, the drawing will pull it together. I mean, it's all trial and error, you guys. Like, there's no particular way that is always going to work for you or not. Angelina is asking, how do you clearly see anything with planes? I find it so hard. It is hard because you have to see past all of the distractions. Like you can't look at veins. You can't look at bones even. Like if you guys look at the plane of the back of your hand, some people might say, oh, it's metacarpals. Let's look at the You can't though. You have to see across the metacarpals. Does everyone see that? Now, if I do the plane of the upper fingers, don't look at the fingers, go to yourself across, across the form. That's how you're gonna see the planes. And so if you guys have not watched part six, I do go over a section where I show you guys like diagrams and everything for different ways that you can start to see the planes. Because guys, honestly, seeing structure, seeing past, wrinkles and it's hard. Like you really have to, number one, know the structure. You got to know what you're looking at and you have to figure out how to apply that to a lot of different types of bodies. I mean, it's not always that straightforward. Okay, guys, let's do another 20 minutes. I'm going to see if I can, it's close. I, I just feel like it needs definitely more time. So let me get back and into my drawing position. I got to move my mic. I keep forgetting how to do that. Okay, so let's get back to the drawing view and let's start adding some more rigorous strokes. I, I feel like my drawing is like, 
Like, if I were to critique it right now, it feels a little watered down. And so I definitely want something a little bit more dramatic. Okay, so let's do another 20 minutes. Okay. Well, let's really, let's go to town, guys. Let's just do it, okay? This is it. I'm going to challenge myself to try to finish this drawing in the next 20 minutes. You know why? Not because... I want to be done, but because I think I need more energy in the drawing. I think the drawing is losing energy. I got to pick it up. So I'm going to try to really bulk up some of these spots. I mean, there's a couple of areas where I think I might need to slow down a little bit more just to like see the form better. But right now, what I'm really going to try to do is just punch in some more energy. I feel like the drawing is losing that energy a little bit. And I, I just don't want that to be the case. What? See, the thing is, like, I actually, you guys, honestly, I care more about the energy of a drawing than I do about the accuracy of the drawing. Because, like, if my drawing is, like, not that accurate, okay, and let's say it's very energetic, like, I would, like, that to me is fine. Like, I'm totally okay with that. Okay. Let me, I, I'm cheating. I'm using black. <laughs> not really cheating. I just, I don't know. I thought I was, ah, oh, shoot. Did I break it? Ugh. That's so annoying. Okay. Who's broken their pencil? Tell me. <laughs> and not just who's broken it. How many times have you broken it during this drawing session today? Tell me about that. I'm always curious. Okay. Let's, let's really, okay. The thumb. Oh, God, why am I like totally ignoring the thumb? Like I'm being so bad right now with the thumb. Okay, because here's the fun stuff, guys. These are the, the nuances that I'm always like, don't do that. But now it's time. It's like you're eating your, your red gummy bears. <laughs> Although for me, it was always the green M&Ms, which is kind of stupid because those don't have a different flavor than the other ones. But I don't know. In my head, they taste better. Okay, does everybody see this? This form and this form. Okay, I sort of drew them the same. But if I squint, the thumb is actually darker. So that's a comparison. That's like, which is darker, this or this? If you make that comparison, you'll be a lot better off. Okay. Let's really do something with these fingers. Get them rigorous. Okay, I'm feeling it, guys. I am. You know, I think that was a good thing. I think me saying, Clara, finish it. <laughs> I think maybe I was taking my time a little bit too much before and I think it was slowing me down so now I'm gonna really look out the big guns let's do it guys let's do it this is this is your time this is the moment this finger is tricky because there are two shadows on it there's a form shadow which I'm drawing right now and there's also a cast shadow which is coming from the other finger and so this shadow is a little bit funky because it's darker and it's a little bit more graphic looking. So you, you, can't, you can't really draw it the way you're drawing the other ones. It's not the same thing. So if I block this out, maybe it's a little bit more dark. It's getting there. I shoot. I might have to like. I don't know, this black is a little bit much. Like, I sort of wish it wasn't quite so dark. Like, even though it's giving me contrast, it's also sort of alarmingly dark <laughs> for some reason. I don't know. It's sort of getting on my nerves. Because while I want the contrast, it's like, I don't want too much contrast. It's all like Goldilocks. Jeez. Okay, that's a little bit better. And here really got to move. See, this finger is like really light. Like it actually does not have that much shadow on it. But also see this, this is like some of the, is that the fingernail? Because I do see an overlap down there. So maybe if I just punch that up a bit, maybe this shadow. Oh, okay. This is like the wrinkle that's like in between the fingers. So I need that, and this is way too stiff. Because the thing about the human figure that's hard is that nothing really is like, like everything really is round, and you have to think about it that way. Because if you don't do that, then it ends up 
looking really geometric. Like I would say in general, most people when they draw the figure, it's either too geometric or it's too round because it really is a little bit of both. It's, it's not just one. And so you really do have to learn how to do both. Okay, I'm sort of regretting the black right now, but I don't know, maybe I just need to darken up this section. Okay. See, I, I sort of feel like I go through this stage where it's like I slow down, but now I feel like I'm getting my rhythm back. So maybe this is a little bit better. And th this actually is not that dark. So let's push that in. Okay, this is starting to get satisfying us. <laughs> this is like starting to get to the fun part. <laughs> Because you know something, actually, the hardest part of the drawing for me is the beginning. The beginning is so much harder. At, at, once you get past like a certain point, it's like things do really need to fall into place eventually. If you work on it long enough, it does start to have that feeling of satisfaction that I think is sometimes hard to feel at the beginning of a drawing. All right, it's starting to get there. I still, I'm not happy with this pinky. Maybe it needs like, more definition. I think I might need like the black to like really show the edge more clearly because it's just, it's not popping the way that I want it to. Oh geez, that black might've been a big mistake. Shoot, something's wrong with, I think I actually, you know what I really think? I think it's too long. I think I should have made it a little bit shorter and maybe that's why it's suffering right now. Actually, there's a lot of wrinkles in here, so maybe I should take some time and work that out. I do want the reflected light to come together. And now I'm really regretting that black. That black was a bad idea, guys. Is it here? I think this needs to get darker. Like that? I think oh, the black is sticking out too much. I need to like blend it into here. And then, see, here's the thing. It's like once you introduce a color, it's like you can't just leave it in that one spot. You, you really do have to like integrate it into the rest of the drawing and that can be hard sometimes. I think sometimes that color, it's like it just jumps out way too much. Hmm, I'm kind of surprised this black is actually like really working here. So yeah, it might be good for me to like chunk up some of these sections. Ah, oh, this, this color pencil totally broken. I'm just like trying to use it and not have it split and die on me. Uh, maybe a little bit more up here on the wrist. See, that sticks out too much. So it's kind of like when you guys add colors to this, you have to like blend it because it's like, it's, it's like if you had a cake and you didn't blend it and there was like flour. Like, oh my God, you know what my sister told me the other day? <laughs> She told me that the blade on her bread maker broke, but she didn't know. And so she put in the bread to make and it only mixed half because half of the, so she like half the bread was baked and the other half was just like flour. Like, isn't that the weirdest thing? Like that must've been so unnerving to like pull out a loaf of bread that was like half flour is so weird. Oh, you want to hear another good cooking story? My mother-in-law. She told me she was making bread. She's like had it in the mixer and then she like accidentally dropped her Pyrex, which is glass, into the mixer. And so the mixer like mixed up all the Pyrex. It's so terrible. I was like, oh my God, I'd be so traumatized if I were you. <laughs> all right, it's better. <sighs> I still need time. I still, <sighs> it's getting there. This is the build up time, guys. Yeah, I, and I feel like horribly slow. Like this to me feels so slow. It, it does not feel natural at all for me right now. Okay, I'm actually, I'm gonna pull out some of this. I feel like this could like disappear a little bit. Like you guys will notice, I don't do a lot with edges. I, I actually sort of actively avoid that most of the time. I really want this cast shadow to be visibly a cast shadow. I don't want it to get confused with the form shadow that's on the other side. So actually what I need to do is make the form shadow more subtle because I think it's too pronounced and it's getting in the way of the cast shadow. This, oh, I'm getting there, I am. 
Okay, good. I still have 10 minutes. I feel better about that. All right, and now I'm gonna start putting in like the folds that are in the fingers. Like th this is the type of thing like I typically do not get to because there's so many other things that have to get worked on in the beginning. But now I really am gonna show you guys how I do that. I mean, it is satisfying to like render something. Cause I, I don't finish things that much actually. Like so much of the time when I'm doing stuff for art prop, I'm like doing something just to show it, but I don't actually get to like finish it. And so this is actually pretty fun. And you guys tell me in the chat if you like these demos where I finish things more, or if you prefer it to be like these sort of gesture sessions. I mean, I really want to make these draw alongs what you guys think are going to help you. So of course in the discord, we have like a video suggestions channel. You guys can always go in there and tell us what you'd like to see if there's a particular medium. I mean, now that I have a much better grip on the live streaming and all the software, I feel like we can do more. So that should be fun. Okay, let's get in, you guys see some of the wrinkles that are in here. I really wanna get those up and running. Because the thing is, I think what can happen is your hand can end up looking very plastic, which is not good. You wanna give it that like, that life, that, that the crunchiness in the skin, for lack of a better word. And then I might actually start adding some of the like really refined, like there's these sort of very minor wrinkles that are in here. And actually, is that, where does that go? I think I totally screwed this up, whatever, it's fine. Okay, and this should be like dark. That's like really, really dark. All right, it's getting there, you guys. Getting there, slowly, slowly. You know what, I need to, this whole area up here, it's like, it's not round enough. I feel like I did not really push some of the form. So does everybody see here? I'm really like drawing the form in the direction. So like the finger is like rounded like this. And so I'm, I'm drawing my shadow strokes sort of like in the same round direction that the finger is in. And I, I think just like, even if it doesn't look that different for me, I'm thinking about it as round. And I do think that makes a difference. I do think that um, that does change somewhat how you see things. Okay. Hopefully you guys can, I, I know some of the detail I'm doing is maybe not that visible, but what I'll do later is I'll shoot close-ups so you guys can really take a look at the details that are in the drawing. So I will get to that probably in the Discord later. Yeah, so much for uh, not relying on the black. <laughs> That's like all I'm doing right now is like adding black. Yeah, you, you put me in a room with a black pencil and it's all over. Okay. What I'd like to do is be in a room with Michael Fassbender. That's what I'd like right now. He's just on the web. <laughs> but see, you know, the thing is, I would like to have a conversation with Benedict. I don't really want to talk to Michael. He's, he's actually like not that smart. <laughs> Sorry, he really is not. Like every time I watch it, I'm like, oh, I'll watch an interview with him. It'll be, and, and I listen to him for like two minutes. I'm like, I can't listen to you. You're just not that smart. So <laughs> like Hugh Jackman, I would like to talk to him. He, he seems really nice and cool. Michael Fassbender, you're just not that smart. I'm sorry. <laughs> like they always interview these actors and they're like, yes, my character is, he's so tortured. And I'm like, I don't care what you think. <laughs> I know it's really mean. It's not nice of me to say that but it just makes me sad that he's just not that interesting as a person. It's fine as long as he looks good and, you know. <laughs> I sort of feel like Benedict would have something cool and artistic to say. I don't know, he just seems like a smaller guy, who knows? So maybe I'm just judging them based on their publicity. I probably am. I should probably just talk about drawing, shouldn't I? Sorry. It's just, you know, your mind wanders when you're drawing. What, what weird thing do you guys sometimes think about when you're drawing? Tell me about that. Because sometimes it's like, geez, where did my mind go? <laughs> it's like, why is it going there? <laughs> oh, it's close. Guys, I got to finish this. Five minutes. Let's do it. We're going to do it. Let's just go to town. It's the thumb. The thumb really needs work. What is my problem with the thumb? God, I am like not 
being nice to the thumb. It's not good. I, I really want to do it, guys. Five minutes. I really, really want to do this. Let's get really rigorous. Let's get efficient. Stop putzing around. Get this very rigorous. See, you guys know you got energy when your drawing board's shaking, which mine totally is right now. <laughs> when I used to teach freshman drawing, I used to get on the freshmen because they would draw like lambs and I'd be like, come on, drawing board has to shake. The drawing board's not shaking, you're doing it wrong. You guys are probably wondering, I, I am sort of, um, my hand is blending a little bit of it, but I don't care that much, actually, because my drawing is not that neat. And I just feel like it would be a big restriction if I couldn't do that. So, yeah. Okay, let's go to town with the black. Where did the black go? Here we go. I think the black might be it. You know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to sharpen it. do guys I'm just gonna embrace the part of me that loves black I'm just gonna do it because why not why not just accept yourself for who you are it, it's like that Billie Eilish <laughs> cosplay did where she's like I am who I am this is who I am I love and accept myself <laughs> Some of you guys might not have seen it, but we did a crit clash on Billie Eilish's music video called My Future, and it just whipped my butt so bad. She, oh man, is not pretty, guys. Yeah, I need this black. I totally need this black. This, this is necessary. I need this, like, this area in the middle. I wanted to get, like, pudgier. Maybe this line needs to come up a little bit more. I mean, this is the part I like, you guys, is this like layering process because the black really does go like right over everything else. And I am going to try to get this vein. This vein is like really weird looking. The way it just like cuts across. Okay, I think I got to build up this section in the middle. Oh guys, I'm so close. Oh no, two minutes. <laughs> no, 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 no. But you know, it's hard because you, you don't want to pick, right? Like you don't want to work the drawing to death. I'm kind of ignoring this area here too. There's maybe some lines to show some of that a little bit better. Oh God, can I do this? Can I? I can. I totally can. Come on, whip it out. Let's do it. Maybe you guys can help me decide. I, I don't know. I have not looked at it yet, but maybe you guys can tell me if you think it's done or if you think I'm going to kill it <laughs> if I work on it more, which, which could very well be the case for sure. That definitely is something that happens to me all the time. All right, moment of truth, guys. It's coming. Just, I think I need to darken this. This is too, too light. Just by comparison, it's too light. I don't want it to get so distracting compared to everything else that's going on. All right, maybe a little bit more up here at the top. Oh, I really need to sharpen my pencil. Oh, 51 seconds. Let's do it, guys. Who, who else is rushing to finish? <laughs> 44 seconds. We can do this, guys. We can do this. Come on. This is it. Those last little moments. Uh, 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 uh. I'll erase that. That was not good. I can even that out. More in here. Okay, the thumb. 
Some probably needs more time. A little bit more, seven seconds. Let's do it. Oh, all right, guys. <laughs> Let's see. What do you think? Tell me now. Are we done? Do we need to work some more? I, I sort of want to do like a little bit more. You know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to do like a couple last little things. It's just going to take a few minutes, okay? And then I'll go and I'll look at the chat and see how you guys did. And then we'll talk a little bit more. Because this does need like two more minutes, honestly. I'm going to cheat. I cheated. There's just a couple little things that to me could use a little bit more rigor. It's still not as rigorous as I like it to be. I wish I had more strokes that were more visible. And I don't think it's as bulbous as I would like it to be. I still think it needs a little bit more. But I just want to like punch up, like especially up here, I didn't really have time to work on this. Well, I did, I just didn't. <laughs> That's the difference. It's not that I didn't have time. I just was lazy and did not work on it. So. Give me five more minutes, guys. I really do want to like bring this to a place where I, I can really say it's done because I have not really done that in these roll ones before. So I think I lost this line again. This line keeps like disappearing. And I did sort of do the vein. I don't know. It's, it's not as rendered as I think it should be. But maybe that's okay. I don't know. I'm not really sure. There's this like little crease up here. See, this area I think suffered a little bit. I think this side needs a little bit more rendering. All right, almost there. I just feel like this this shape down here, it's like it's a little bit um I don't know, like I, I'm sort of showing my strokes right now, which I was not before, but I sort of feel like I'm ready for that. So maybe let's just punch that up a bit more. Maybe a little bit more in here, I think. Show some of those last strokes. Let's see if we can get it looking a little bit better. And maybe a couple more lines here. Oh, I'm picking now, aren't I? I think I'm picking. Yeah, I, I don't think I'm making much. Okay, we're done. Done, done, done. <laughs> All right. All right, you guys. There it is. Let me, um, actually, I can read the chat from here if I, like, move myself up. <sighs> move that. Oh, that's not going to work. Okay, let me switch to a different scene, and I'll take a look at what you guys are talking about. Okay, let's see what you guys are saying. Iconic says, I always avoid parts of a drawing for some reason, even though I know at some point I'm going to have to do it. Yep, <laughs> it's, the human race sort of has a problem with procrastination. That's, that happens on all levels. Ayane says, I can see the planes, but it takes me too long to see them. When I'm sketching from imagination, it takes 40 to 50 minutes to get the sketch to look right, but with references or from life, it's faster. What I would say then, Ayana, keep your sketches more simple. Because actually it's harder for people to keep their drawings simple than to start adding all the really fancy stuff. So I would definitely say that you shouldn't be laboring over it for that long. I think that's a little bit too difficult. Um, let's see. Ayane says maybe a mix. Like, look at gesture drawing in the beginning, show what's good for a gesture drawing, and then show how you'd finish it with anatomy, structure, and all of that. I mean, it's trial and error. I mean, I can certainly show you guys what I think works for me, but that's not going to work for everybody. And that's why I tell people, listen, you should watch other artists. You should look at different ways of working, because I am so not the word. I'm one person, and there's a lot of different ways that you guys can think about doing this. Let's see what else people are talking about. Karen say, it is good to see you work such a long time on a hand. Learned a lot today. Yeah, a lot of people, I think you might think that you can't work on a hand for that long, but as I showed you guys, <laughs> there is plenty and I, I could do more. I just am stopping because 
I don't want to pick. I, I want the drawing to retain that freshness and that spontaneity. And I think it's a problem if I stay with it for too long. Rachel says, I seriously need to start working bigger. Looks like so much fun. I love working big, Rachel, because some people will say, oh, well, I don't want to work big because that's too much work or it's going to take too long. But you know what? Honestly, I think sometimes if you draw too small, you can feel very restricted and you can feel like you can't move around so much. And so I'm just somebody, I work better large, but I would just say if you have never worked large, you should try it because you might actually discover that it's different. I mean, you can't draw the same way. You have to somewhat adjust your drawing approach, but that's fine. I mean, I think again, it's like, I really am somebody who pushes being a well-rounded artist. Like I am not into like, I do these two things and that's it. I think that's a bad idea. I think being more well-rounded is a little bit better. Let's see. And let's see what else people are saying. Joshua saying, have you seen the movie Shame? Do you really have to ask that? <laughs> if you guys haven't seen that movie, look it up. I'm not going to tell you what it's about because we're going to get demonetized. But just uh, take a wild guess why I've watched Shame a bunch of times. Sutnir says, I like how you blended with the colored pencil. I like using mine for line quality. Yeah, a lot of people don't think about colored pencil as being very good for tone unless it's like a really long drawing, but you can. You you can get it across if you use that uh, sharpening technique that I told you guys about. And Ayane says, honestly, working big is one of the things that made it a lot easier to draw. I was against it at first, but using my whole arm made it much easier to draw and pretty much got rid of cramping. Yeah, you, you actually do better when you draw with your whole arm. Like I think sometimes when people, the movement is constricted to just their hand. I think that gets very, very difficult for a lot of people. And it's, it's not easy because the physical part of it, I think is definitely really, really important. So guys, I think it's time for you to go over to Discord and start posting what you guys did because I'm very excited. Please put it on Instagram with hashtag ArtProfShare and I'll put it in our stories today. And remember, you want to post in draw alongs. That's the channel where I will be checking. I'll be hanging out there in a few minutes. See what you guys did. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and join the Art Prof family. And thank you so much to our top Patreon supporters who make everything possible here at Art Prof. Thank you to you guys for drawing along with me. I had a blast and I can't wait to see what you guys did. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.